Hi everyone! In this video tutorial, I'd like to take a look at the Friedel Crafts acylation process of a benzene. So over here you can see we have our benzene group, and you can see we can either use an acyl chloride or we can use an anhydride to get this reaction going. So in this case here you have your benzene, you have your acyl chloride, and in this case that R represents whatever the group is, the substituent is that you want to attach ultimately to that benzene group. So maybe it's a methyl group that you want to attach, then R would be CH3. So you're going to react those two in the presence of the first one, AlCl3 and then H2O, and you'll get out your acylated benzene group, and then you'll also get out your HCl. Alternatively, you could use an anhydride in this case here, so still a benzene group, but now you've got this group here, where the R is once again going to be whatever it is you want to attach to that benzene. And then once again, AlCl3 followed by water. And then here you can see you make exactly the same thing, whatever that R group is. And then in this case, the byproduct though is different. One note I do want to make is that this R group oftentimes can represent a hydrogen. In this case with the Friedel Crafts acylation, it's not going to be because if this was a hydrogen, you'd be making a benzaldehyde and you'd essentially need to have a very unstable intermediate to react with. So you'll find that there's a different way that you go in order to make your benzaldehyde group. And we'll look at that at the end of the video. So let's first take a look at the mechanism for the cases where R is not hydrogen. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the first step. So remember, in these electrophilic aromatic substitution-like reactions, what you always have to do is generate an electrophile that is strong enough to motivate the benzene to react. Remember, benzene is aromatic, which means it's a particularly stable compound. So it's not necessarily going to be very willing to react. So what you want to do is create an electrophile that is strong enough to get the benzene to engage in the reaction. So that's what step one here is, is the generation of the electrophile. So what we have from the perspective of the acyl chloride is we have our acyl chloride and we're going to react this with AlCl3, which is a Lewis acid. Now remember, Lewis acids are able to accept an electron pair, and that's what this aluminum is going to do. This chloride has three lone pairs on it. It's going to use one of them to come and attack that aluminum. In that attack, we're going to form this compound here. So now remember that the chlorine is a relatively electronegative species, so it's not particularly favorable for it to have a positive charge on it. And it's going to have a stronger pull on the electrons than the carbon does. So what will wind up happening then is that this bond is then motivated towards the chlorine such that this bond breaks, the electrons get dumped on that chlorine, but now this carbon is left with less than an octet, which we know is not fabulous, but it does make it a wonderful electrophile for the next step. So let's see how we use this to actually get this benzene acylated. Okay, so now before we continue on to the acylation step, I just wanted to mention one thing about the electrophile we formed. So as I left it, the acylium ion that we formed is going to be this structure right here. Now this one here though, leaves a carbon without a complete octet, meaning it's not the best resonance structure you could draw. So what you could have is that this lone pair here, let's say, comes down and it would form a triple bond between the carbon and the oxygen. So this structure is actually a better structure in terms of stability because everything has an octet. And this oxygen there, not favorable, has a positive charge on it, but it's still overall got everything covered with an octet. Now, remember though, they are resonance structures. Neither one is a true representation of what the real structure looks like. So you should be able to use either one as the electrophile. My preference usually goes with this one because it's very clear. You've got a carbon with a positive, so it makes the attack point very, very obvious. Where sometimes I find that people get a little confused because the oxygen has a positive and they want to attack that group. Now, like I said, it shouldn't matter which one, and depending on your textbook that you're using, it could be one or the other. So for example, Bruce Bruce's textbook uses this as the electrophile, and the Ludon textbook uses this one as the electrophile. So always default to what your professor's preferences are, but at the end of the day it really shouldn't matter. Just remember it's always going to be the carbon that is attacked. Okay, so now that we've talked about it, let's take a look at the next step of the mechanism. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this acylation step now. So over here we have the benzene group and we have the electrophile that we formed. Remember, I'm going to use this electrophile just because I think it really highlights why the carbon group is being attacked. You could use the other version. The arrows will be slightly different though. So now over here we have our benzene and it's going to use its pi cloud electrons to come and attack that carbon group. 
So now this is going to be an equilibrium step because even though this is a really great electrophile, the benzene is still having to break aromaticity in order to make this reaction happen. So this is the final product that we have from this step. Now, the motivating force for the next step is that we would like to re-establish aromaticity. So what we're going to have then is there's going to be some kind of base in solution, and that base can come and attack this hydrogen. When that attack happens, this bond will break and those electrons can collapse down, re-establishing our aromaticity. And you can see because of that re-established aromaticity, it's a one-way arrow. Now, we might think, okay, we're done, but we're not actually done. And the reason for that is we have to have an excess of AlCl3, a Lewis acid in a solution. Now, it's important to note that this group here, this ketone, is weakly basic, which means that it is able to engage in a Lewis acid base style reaction, such that when these two are together, what we actually get at the end of this step is this complex here. So now remember that when I first introduced this, there were two steps. The first one used the AlCl3, the second used water. The purpose of water is to liberate our product from this complex. So let's go ahead and see how that's done. Okay, so now our final goal is to liberate our isolated benzene product from this complex that's formed. So the way you do that is you take the reaction mixture typically and you're going to pour it into ice cold water and that will get your, your product out. What happens is that three equivalents of water are required in order to get this off. Now the three equivalents are easy to kind of understand if you think about the fact you want to make aluminum hydroxide which requires three equivalents of hydroxide and you also have three chloride groups so you'd need to be able to make three HCl groups out. So now this is pretty much what you need to know in order to understand the friedel crafts acylation. Do remember one thing, I did comment and note that the R group cannot be a hydrogen. So this cannot undergo a friedel crafts acylation if you want to make a benzaldehyde. You'd actually have to use the Gatterman-Koch reaction in order to do that. And there is a video for that, just click the link in the description below.